Hello, Alex here, and today we're going to talk about my first and foolhardy foray into 4x5 format photography as an excuse to talk about the importance of learning from your mistakes. Let's get into it. I was recently talking to someone about the idea of Instagram and 500 pixels being like a curated feed of someone's photographic endeavors. You don't see all the screw ups. You don't see all of the out of focus pictures, the pictures that are underexposed by two stops because you forgot to change the ISO. Even with digital, you see the good one of the burst of six shots. You don't see the other five and that's more acceptable and understandable in a digital sense but it's very easy to kind of get lost and forget that everyone else is also making a lot of mistakes. People are pulling out the dark slide before they've closed their large format lens. They're opening the back of their 35 millimeter camera. They're forgetting to focus. They're forgetting to change their shutter speed when they stop down the aperture. Everyone makes mistakes in photography and film photography I would say you're not more prone to making mistakes, but they have a lot more of a direct financial impact. Uh, with digital, you just take another picture if the scene is still there. With film, that, that costs you money, you know? Either, even if you get the film for free, you still have to develop it and that costs some amount of money and your time. But if there's one thing I learned in my PhD, it's that there's no such thing as failure, only a negative result. It's like that Edison mindset of, oh, I haven't failed. I've just found X number of ways you can't make a light bulb. That kind of idea. You haven't actually failed at doing whatever if you learn why it happened and what you can do to address that in the future. So as an example of this, we're gonna talk in some way about my first and foolhardy foray into four x five format photography and that is not as difficult to say as it would seem because I practiced it far too much. So I mentioned in a previous video that I started my 4x5 journey with the Calumet CC400 monorail. However, I didn't use the 90mm lens that came with it because the shutter's sticky, it still needs to be serviced. So, I picked up a Bausch & Lomb Kodak ball bearing shuttered a uh, 5 inch f8 lens. This thing is terrible. It's cheap. It barely has any elements. The coverage is mediocre. It vignettes quite a bit on the ground glass, which isn't that bright to begin with, which makes focusing very difficult. It's not very sharp and it doesn't use the f-stop system that we're familiar with. It uses the old universal standard system. Uh, I was going to do a video where I jokingly reviewed it in comparison to a real modern 135 millimeter lens uh, but it, it died the, the shutter just stopped working and I took it apart I can't even see what's broken never mind try and get it working again so whatever it cost me 20 euros in a charity shop I'm not going to lose sleep over it it's a nice decoration piece though and it is pretty cool to look at I took my first shots with that lens and that camera on Harman's direct positive paper uh, because I wanted to use a bit of multi-grade dev. Why not? I had some anyway. Uh, and I thought it would be nice because I didn't really know how I could scan 4x5 at the time just to get a direct positive print. That turned out to be a bad idea. Uh, if you're starting with that, just go with film and find some way to scan it. So again, that was a failure, a failure in choosing the wrong uh, emulsion medium on which to shoot. What was wrong with it? Well, it has newspaper dynamic range, as my friend Tom has described. Uh, it's pretty, pretty high contrast. I know you can pre-flash it and do different things to reduce the contrast, but it, it's pretty crazy. So uh, the first couple of shots I took were grossly over or underexposed, and that's not even counting my first time shooting it because I didn't even get a shot. I spent so long setting up my equipment downstairs under a safe light with the, the 1DX all wrapped up in black bags and tape to block out any light, pre-focused manually, recording at ISO 50,000 or something so I could record you know, the process of me developing the film under a safe light so you could see it. 
and it didn't work out because I loaded the paper backwards. So I just exposed the back of the paper and uh, there was nothing. So that's a failure. How do I address that? I, under a safe light, because it is fine under a safe light, open the full pack of film to figure out which way was up. Simple. Um, I can feel the emulsion inside now. I didn't know what it felt like originally, but now I know that it actually, it's curved the opposite to something like Ilford multigrade paper, the arches on the other side. So, small things you pick up. So after all that hullabaloo with the direct positive paper, I just caved and bought a pack of Fomapan 100 from Jonggun Cameras. Love those folks. Um, it was pretty easy to work with. Uh, the notch code is very, makes it much easier to load than something like the direct positive paper, which has no notch because it's the final print. You don't want a notch cut out of it. So I, I loaded this into my holders and took a few pictures over the Christmas holidays. I had two holders at the time, so four shots to work with. I took two shots, uh, one where I bracketed the aperture because I wasn't sure how well um, the lens would perform at a wider aperture. Not very well, but turns out they were both out of focus. So lesson learned, actually use the loop. I bought a loop, I just wasn't bothered using it that day and that turned out to work against me. That's a, a small mistake in the grand scheme of things, but it's forgetting to do something and then learning to remember to do that thing. And I've done it since and it's worked out. So I tried developing the film. I didn't have any rubber bands at the time, so I didn't want to do the taco method. Well, I couldn't do it. So I had to go ahead and just throw them in the tank. And I thought I'd save a bit of road and I'll do some rotary processing. And so I ro loaded the film in and rotated the tank continuously for the nine minutes, I think it was. That didn't work because the film was floating freely. F -f 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 -f. And all that happened was I got undeveloped patches on the end. And in addition to that, because the sheets were floating freely and not just sticking to the insides of the tank like the direct positive paper did, that's what I wanted to test. They just stuck to each other, so only one of them actually really got developed. And even then, as I said, it's not in focus. Not the best overall, so I learned quite a bit from that. One, taco method good, free rotary processing without a rib, bad. Two, use the loop and learn to actually bloody focus the thing properly. Three, I did in fact learn how to develop it because what was developed, you know, the areas that were developed were developed properly. So that was a small accomplishment in that, you know, I had progressed in a very small way towards actually getting developed four by five sheet film. So it wasn't a waste. I learned from it. I learned that you should do the taco method or use a, a holder with ribs like a mod 54, something like that. You can't just throw them in. And I learned that my uh, overall method and calculation, because I did adjust the time for rotary processing, that worked out. So then rather than do rotary processing, I tried just putting one sheet in the tank with uh, a rubber band, taco method style, and just developed it in my 600 mil chems. And that's how I found out that 600 mil wasn't enough. So we ended up with a shot that is not fully developed. Thankfully, it was a, a very wide shot compared to what I wanted. So I was able to crop in and get something. But that's what I learned there is that you need, you know, closer to a leader to comfortably develop your film. But you could probably get away with 750 or 800 mils, but 600 in this case was not enough. Simple as that. Then it came to my final shot of our family Christmas tree. Put everything that I'd learned together, one liter in a three reel Patterson tank, just Rodinol, and it worked nicely. The shot is thoroughly developed end to end, corner to corner, no patches, nothing uneven. It worked. So each step of the way, by methodically looking at what went wrong, what caused it to go wrong, whether that's me or something chemical like the film floating freely and just not actually sitting in the developer, then analyzing that and figuring out what can be done to mitigate or alleviate that issue to address it. That brought me from completely unexposed four by five direct positive paper where I shot the back of the film of the paper to an actual final shot of my Christmas tree. 
And I know that like wasting paper, film and chemicals is not something you want to do, but it's so satisfying being able to work things out bit by bit and inch closer towards a successful shot. And that's what I did. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed my little tale and listening to me ramble about the importance of learning from your mistakes. We're all gonna make them, as I said, and we do make them. And I like to be honest about that on this channel. I don't want to hide everything, you know, I have a lot of rolls of film that I'm gonna be talking about that are not good because of me. So we're gonna talk about that. Whether it's something you should be mindful of, like maybe a film needs to be loaded in a certain way, needs to be developed with something in mind, whatever, I don't know. There could be any number of things going on or just avoiding a certain type of light. That's a common thing with a lot of films. So long as we can learn from those mistakes, figure out what to do going forward, I think we'll be okay. And it's important to recognize that it will be okay. A, me a mistake isn't going to end you photographically. Just try and figure out what went wrong, how you can address it and try again. That's gonna be it for today. Stay safe and bye-bye for now. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at chaka1277 for new pictures every single day. If you like this video and enjoy what I do on the channel, please consider checking out my Patreon where the tiers start at just one euro per month.